Hello and welcome to the third episode in our series on Ayurveda in Mental Health and Neurosciences. In the previous episodes, we understood some of the fundamental concepts related to Ayurveda, its uh, application to physical and mental health, good mental health practices and also focused a little bit on mental health disorders, how their symptoms are actually diagnosed as per Ayurvedic principles, etc. In this episode, we will try to understand how mental health disorders could be managed and treated as per Ayurvedic principles. Come, let us meet our expert. Uh, the principles or the remedies or the treatment principle we can broadly classify it into three. First one is Deva Vipashraya Chikilsa. It is like the psycho spiritual way of healing. And uh, for example, prayer itself is considered as a therapy. The second one is Yukti Vipashraya Chikilsa. In that, Ahara Aushada Yojana. It means we have to modify their diet and we have to give them some medicine. That is Yukti Vipashraya Chikilsa. And the third one is Sattu Avajaya Chikilsa. It is like, uh, it is more important in the context of uh, mental disorders or some psychological aspects of disorders. Uh, there are some five steps in this uh, uh, treatment principle. That is Jnana, Vijnana, Dhairya, Shmriti and Samadhi. Uh, the individual mental health disorders, we can uh, first we have to consider their dosha, like what dosha is involved in their disease and up to what extent it is involved. Then only we can decide the treatment. If it is uh, involved in a more severe way, that is called as bahudosha vasta. Then we opt for shodhana, that is biopurificatory measures. Otherwise, if it is very mild, we can go for shamana therapies, that some medicine has to be taken. It is not like shodhana. These are the two main ways. There are various herbs used in the context of mental health disorders and they are administered in many forms like single drug we can use and also in the form of oil, ghee, kashaya, all those, uh, in all these forms we can use this medicine. And some of the examples are Manduka Parani, that is Centella Asiatica and Shanku Bushpi, Convalvulus Pluricollins and Guduji, Tinospora Cordifolia and HT Madhu, Glycerisa Glabra. Oh, these are very few examples of the herbs that we are using in the context of psychiatric illness. Yes sir, as I said earlier, there were three methods mainly, Devayapashraya, Yukti Vipashraya and Sattvavajaya. In this, Devayapashraya and Sattvavajaya are the non-pharmacological means of treating. In Sattvavajaya, there are five steps. First one is Jnana. In this step, we will provide the self-knowledge about the patient, like what are his strength, what are his capabilities, such, thing, such things we will explain to them. And the second one is Vijnana. It is, in this step, we will provide some scientific knowledge about their disorders, about the possible treatments, such things we will explain in the next step. And the third is Dhairya. In this step, we will reinforce their coping skills. And the th uh, fourth one is Smriti. Uh, it is the application of the memory, like we uh, ask them to recollect the previous victories. Such things can be adopted in this step. And the last one is Samadhi. In Samadhi, we can uh, seek the help of yoga, meditation, etc. to get a stable state of mind. These are the five steps included in Sattva Vajaya Chikilsa. Yes sir, we can integrate modern medicine with the Ayurveda principles in the treatment of mental health disorders and in the department of integrative medicine we are implementing the same sir. And uh, especially in some metabolic syndromes associated with the use of antipsychotics and in negative schizophrenia uh, etc. We are getting a uh, good improvement, clinically also we are observing much improvement sir. If the patient is on some antipsychotics, uh, we can administer panchakarma in them, like the five purificatory procedures. And also uh, internally also we can give medicine along with antipsychotics uh, in the form of oil or ghee or kashaya or powder. Uh, all these we are doing currently. 
and also we can administer some satwavajaya chigilsa along with the antipsychotics all these are currently practicing with antipsychotics sir as is no side effects were noticed uh, while giving this medicine along with antipsychotics we will advise usually we will advise the patient to keep a half an hour gap with these medicine and they can take it and no as such no side effects are noticed sir actually as such prevention uh, we are not sure sir but we can go for certain measures that will cert, uh, absolutely help to keep our mental health positive they are like dinacharya they are a set of daily regimens that one has to follow ruducharya that they are a set of uh, seasonal regimens one has to follow in their life then ajara rasayana satvrata all are uh, examples for such practices to keep our mental health positive and this din uh, satvrata and ajara rasayana are certain codes of conduct that one has to follow in their own life so these practices will keep our mental health positive sir so it will help uh, in one or the other way but as such prevention we are not sure sir in nim hands the department of integrative medicine is providing ayurveda treatment along with the other system of medicine and we have a opd uh, running on g13 on the days of monday thursday and friday and also we have a well developed ip system that is working with 30 bedded setup and we also have a panchakarma theater almost 10 panchakarma theaters fully fledged sir this concludes the third episode in our series on ayurveda in mental health and neurosciences In this episode we understood some of the information related to the management and treatment of mental health disorders including pharmacological and non-pharmacological methods how to integrate modern medicine with ayurvedic principles and where to seek help we will be back with our next episode namaste